Are you wanting to see what I have been working on in my sewing room this month? This is my monthly makes video where I show you all the things that I have sewn in the past few weeks. I always want to know what you guys are making too, so be sure to leave a comment below letting me know like your favorite project, something big that you've been working on, so that we can all celebrate our productivity together. <laughs> also be sure to like this video so that YouTube will show it to other people. Subscribe and click the bell if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. If you're new here, I'm Lindsay. Welcome. I share my love, passion, and obsession with sewing here on this YouTube channel. Be sure to um, introduce yourself in the comments section so that I can get to know you a little bit better. You are going to see a Cliff's Notes version of everything that I've made this month, but I also post full pattern reviews every single Monday, so be sure to look out for my Make It Monday videos as well. All right, let's get into it. All right, the first big, big, big thing which took up so much time <laughs> and mental capacity. You guys have no idea how daunting a sew along is to film all those parts and make sure you're explaining it correctly and get it uploaded and promote it so that you, I make sure that you guys can find it and see it. Oh, it's just so much. But the garment that I made for this month's sew along is McCall's 8218. It's that really cute knit jumpsuit. I am genuinely so proud of it. I really do love it, even though there are some still a little bit of you lingering fitting issues. They are going to be so easy to fix for the next version. I have been wearing mine all the time. The temperatures are like just about right here in Charlotte right now um, for like a French cherry jumpsuit. Even though it doesn't have sleeves, it's still like super, super comfortable. Keeps my legs nice and toasty. Um, and if I need to like answer the door or go check the mail or, you know, go grab some groceries or something, it's not like I'm having to put on a whole new outfit as if I were wearing like regular pajamas. So I really, really love this make. Um, I hope you guys will be making it too. I've heard a few little sprinklings in the comments about how some of you are working on yours. Um, so just let me know if you finish it and what you think of it. I also had been seeing for like a while now, months, maybe a year or so, all of these sewists who just kind of like willy nilly like make up a dress pattern. And I'm always so intrigued by that because I not only follow a sewing pattern to the T, but like I'm making alterations and like trying to perfect that sewing pattern even more and more. So these folks that are just able to like, I don't know, just like make up a garment, it's always fascinating to me. Um, I don't know if you guys know Rosary Apparel here on YouTube, but she recently posted about how to make a dress out of four rectangles. And I was like, okay, I can do that. Um, and I have done that. I will have a lot more information on kind of what I thought about the process and, and how it went. Um, but I decided to use a vintage sheet to do it. So this with the string is the back and then I shirred the whole front and then there's the skirt and then the sleeves have like these really big like puff sleeves. So I do love um, the vintage sheet as this kind of cottage core type of dress. It goes great with the shirring, I think. Um, I think the little flowers look really pretty when they're all like close up together. So I did make this. I did make this and I do like it and I will wear it um, and tell you, I'll film a whole video on like the, on like my thoughts on the process, similar to like a pattern review video, but um, obviously no pattern. So I'll just talk about the experience, how it was following um, Rosary Apparel's uh, tutorial and all of that kind of stuff. So that was kind of a fun, I don't know, it felt very like going rogue, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was kind of just like, I don't really know what I'm doing. Felt very foreign, which, you know, when you've been sewing for a long time and you feel like, you know, you kind of got it down, it's nice to do something a little bit outside your comfort zone because then it just gets your little synapses firing and stuff like that. Speaking of which, I also really kind of got it into refashioning this month. I went to this, um, this like big, it was presented kind of like a craft fair. Um, it was women owned businesses and a lot of them were like handmade stuff. So I was expecting to go there and find a lot of people like selling earrings that they had made, selling like dog bandanas that they had made, 
um, selling, I don't know, anything that, you know, you can just kind of make at home and, you know, have a business for. But what else was also there were these boutiques. Um, so these boutiques would buy booths and they'd have like a selection of clothing there. And so I'm looking through these clothes and like I'm getting a really good handle on what Gen Z likes to wear <laughs> because every booth was kind of the same. They all kind of had similar things. Um, some of the big, big things I noticed were uh, tie dye, still huge, oversized slouchy stuff, major, um, body conscious stuff, like super tight rib knit comfy stuff um, was everywhere. But I also noticed that they had these like <sighs> jean jackets meshed with a hoodie. And I've seen these before, um, but I was shocked to see that they were like $65. And I was like, I know I can go to Goodwill and find a jean jacket, find a hoodie and sew them together. And so that's exactly what I did. I'm so proud of this. This is like one of my favorite makes of all time. Um, and it cost me like $8. So this is it, super cute, right? Cropped things were very, very big at this little boutique and it has a little hoodie in the back. Um, I did a whole like reel and a TikTok. So depending on which um, little network you prefer, you can see a little tutorial on how this came together. So easy to do. I did it in like a couple of hours um, and it's really, really cute and fun and so, so, so comfortable. Um, so I really, really love it. I love it so much. And it was genuinely one of the easiest projects with like the biggest like result, like a good return on investment. Um, the other really big thing I noticed at that craft fair was fringe. And I'm talking like everything and their brother fringed. It was fringe with rhinestones, fringe with leather, fringe with cotton, fringe Fringe, at fringe, fringe, fringe everywhere and fringe on everything. Fringe on jumpsuits, fringe on jackets, fringe on sweaters, fringe, 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 fringe everywhere. Every booth had a fringe thing. And again, I'm like, mm, I think I could make that. So went to Goodwill, um, black denim jacket. Then I went to, I tried to go to Joanne and get um, black fringe, but they didn't have any that was long enough. Um, I wanted like a leather suede situation to kind of play off the denim, um, but they only had some that was like this long and I really wanted like super, super long six inch fringe. So I ended up getting it off Amazon, womp womp. But this, this is my jacket. So here's the jean jacket, right? And then you put the fringe all along the sleeve, all along the back and then all along the other sleeve. And I know there are a bunch of you that are out there from like the eighties. Um, who remember like wearing a lot of this kind of stuff back then, 70s, 80s. Well, it's back, baby. So I absolutely love my French jacket. I love that it's black because it's like still very wearable, still very much like not too, too crazy, you know? And with the black leather fringe in the back, it's like a pop, but not like, what is she wearing? Um, there were a lot of the stuff at that little boutique fair or whatever it was, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, that was like very much like, um, I don't, it, it felt like you would buy it to wear to like a bachelorette party. You know what I mean? It felt like special in a way that was kitschy. You know what I mean? This actually feels kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm just convincing myself of that. I don't know. But that, obviously, it's so easy to do. I just sewed the fringe right on top of the jacket. No big deal. The hardest part was sourcing the fringe. Um, but that is it. The, that's all I was really able to make this month. Again, the sew along always just takes so much of my time here in the sewing room. I do have quite a few things that I cut out and didn't sew. So I will be excuse me, talking about those in my plans video coming up here in a couple days. Um, so be sure to look out for that. But I have tons of links in the description box um, where I got my fringe, the link to Rosary Apparel's uh, tutorial video. Um, I can even link my Instagram reel or my TikTok. 
Um, anything that I mentioned that has a link, I'll make sure to put it in the description box. I have also linked for you guys last month's makes video. I'm trying to say that three times fast. Um, just in case you'd like to see kind of what I made in August and kind of keep up with some of the things that I have been making. I've linked that there too, but I've also put it on this end slate. Um, so you can just tap that and head on over to watch another Inside the Hip video. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye.